All right, we're uh, gonna get started. Well, welcome to uh, Profiles Here, Profiles There, Profiles Everywhere. I'm Jane Hanley. I work with a company called AGH Strategies in Washington, D.C. We're a civil serum consulting shop. And I'm Virginie Ganivet from CV Desk. We are based here in Denver, and we are CVCM service provider. Okay, so um, who knows what a profile is in civil CRM? You can just shut it out. Somewhere in the middle, yell it out. All right, collection of fields. Good, Every, the, you guys have a basic understanding of a profile. The word is really confusing for a lot of people because if you've used another database before, um, you end up with people who think that a profile is a contact record and then there's all this confusion about what a profile is. So A, a plus for everybody. Um, so within Civis CRM, um, these are the things that profiles do that you see all the time. They're how your contribution pages, your event registration, your membership signup, your user, user registration, it's what powers all of that. That's where you pick it. But can you think of other ways that profiles are used in Civi? There's other ways. They also work as your board and staff and member directories or service provider directories, depending on what kind of organization you're running. And they also can just be a standalone signup form. They handle survey and petition responses. They um, change, they're actually how you view your search results. They help with internal data entry. And then they also just are running in the background of your site, whether you actually realize they're there or not. So Virginie is going to tell you about profiles and custom fields. Yes, who? Someone can tell me the difference between profiles and custom field. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good answer, yes. So custom fields are really the container of your data. So that's the, the container, that's the data structure that's going to be saved in your database, that's going to hold your data. And the profile is going to be used to collect this data. So you're going to include custom fields in profiles. That's the way you're going to collect your data and send them in the custom fields. So that's why we have a lot of these questions and as the Jen said, the confusion between profiles and, and custom field. So usually because the custom field is saved in the database, you're going to select a very short label for the custom field. And this label will not be seen by your constituents when they're going to, to fill out the profile. <laughs> so this is an example about for an example, a custom field that's going to, to let us know if the constituents want to receive our newsletter. So the label of the custom field is just a very short name, newsletter. The type of the custom field is yes, no. But how is going to look like in the profile? So we're going to add this custom field in the profile. Oh, before that, we need to make sure that also you can make this custom field searchable if you want this custom field to be part of your report or if you want to be able to make a search on the custom field. So make sure that you make this custom field searchable. Also, there is sometimes confusion about the required. So there is required at the custom field le level and require required in the profile. If you want to have this field required in your profile, you make it required in the profile, not the custom field. If you make the custom field required, then it will prevent you to save a contact if you don't have a value for this particular custom field. So usually we recommend, very unusual, to have custom field required. So usually we recommend not to have the custom field required, but to make the, the field in the profile required. Okay, so this is the result of uh, all the attributes of your custom field. And now this is how it looks like in your profile. So when you add the custom field in the profile, you are welcome to have, uh, to add a very nice label that's going to be seen by the constituent you would like to receive on newsletter. 
And then as you can see on the screen, then you make this field required. And this is the final result if you do a preview on this profile. So if you use Drupal views, you might use if you use Drupal, you might use a view to do something like this, but if you ever want to show a member directory, the easiest way to do it with Joomla and WordPress is to create a directory listing um, profile with, uh, with your data instead of CRM and then exposing it. So in this example, what we want to do is make a directory of our members. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to have the group of people that you want, whose information you want to show. So I've made this smart group of members um, I'm going to save the group, and then I'm going to say it's going to be a standalone former directory. And then there's this advanced setting that you may have seen, you may have never paid attention to it before. When it says limit listings to a specific group, that means only show the people that are in this group. So if you didn't have that, you know, then, you know, it would show everybody. So that's where we choose our member group that we just made. And then we start adding the fields that we want to show. So there's different um, options that you have with what information is searchable, what information is viewable, and it's all based off your like preferences of your organization. So if you want your director to be fully searchable, you can have every field is searchable. You can find someone by their first name, by the city they live in, by their last name, by their employer. But maybe you just want it to be last name and city. Or maybe you don't want them to be searchable at all that's the case, then you don't have to choose searchable. But these public pages and listings, it also affects what actually just shows up in the directory. So maybe if I went and clicked on more information, I could see more information about someone. But in the actual list, I could only see the things that say public pages and listings. And so here's the list of all the fields that we're adding to our directory. So you'll see that they have different options with them. So You'll see some are public pages and listings, some are just public pages, some are searchable, some are not. Um, and then you'll see what that actually looks like. The next screen, so you'll get a good idea of like what equals what up down here. And then here is our member directory. So you'll notice that first name and last name, since they weren't on public pages and listings, aren't here. I mean, they are because of the display name, it will just do that. but. If I'd had employ current employer here and I didn't have it on the, on the listing page, it wouldn't show up here. So you're not getting all the information about someone. If you went and clicked on view, you'd actually get a fuller picture of that person. So depending on how you want to use the profile, um, that, that will range. So if you want to use something like this, there's um, two different ways that it can appear. So if you don't want search results to show by default, where it says force equals one, it can be for, force equals zero. And then all it gives you is this search box. And the only things that you can search on are last name, state, and country. Right, so, so <clears throat> profiles can be used also to create standalone forms. Who can give me some examples of when we need stand standalone form? No idea, yeah? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, that might be, um, yeah, so what about a contact us form on your website, or what about a newsletter sign up form, and also it's used a lot for volunteer application, when you want to recruit volunteers, you want to be able to collect data about your volunteers, and then, so that's what we call a standalone form, okay. So when you create your profile to create your standalone form, standalone profile, this is the different options that are open to you, available to you. So first you can have that automatically each contact that's going to be added in your database through the profile or through the form will be automatically added in a specific group. So in the example, our volunteer application, we want all the contact to be added automatically in the volunteer prospect group. You have also the option to have an email sent out automatically to one of your administrators of CVCIM. So that's the field saying notify when profile form is submitted. 
you can have one email sent out. Also, it's good to think about what's going on when the person will have completed the form. So that's what we use the redirect URL or cancel redirect URL. So it's nice to make sure then when they click on the save button, they will be redirected to your website. But then you can decide which page of your website, home page or a thank you page. Also, there is options regarding you have to make sure that uh, that's a, how the contact is going to be saved in your database. So maybe um, all of you about duplicates rules. So these are duplicates who are used when the way that the contact is going to be decided that if it's a duplicate or not. So usually and really we recommend that as an uh, option for what to do open duplicate match to use the option in the middle update the matching contact. So usually, the, by default, the email address is used to, 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 to decide if it's a duplicate contact or not. Be careful because by default, when you create a new standalone profile, the uh, default option that's selected is the first one, issue warning and do not save. That will be a, big, a little bit surprising for the volunteer who is going to fill out the application because they will not be able to save if his email is already in the database. So please make sure not to select this option. The third option is more unusually used and it's when you need to create duplicates in your database. So who needs to create duplicates in the database? That's not necessarily something that we encourage, but for some situation, we might need for to, to allow the duplicate contact to be saved. Okay, so this is the result uh, of your profile used as a volunteer application. And as you can see, the parts say volunteer interest with the different options. These are the custom field. So we added a custom field named volunteer interest in the profile to save the interest from your potential volunteers. Now another maybe less known way to use profiles, they are used for petitions. So I don't know who knows what the petition is in CVCIM. Yes? Yes, and absolutely. So, and there is, we have to be careful with using the name survey because there is two things in CVCM. You have petitions and survey. Yeah, absolutely. So these are part of CV campaign. So CV campaign is a core module that can be installed and enabled in your CVCIM. And with CV campaign, you can create and manage petitions and you can also create and manage survey. So we're going to talk about both, and both are using profile. So petition is used for collecting data online. So as you just said, it can be used as online, what we generically talk about online survey, such as uh, training evaluation after training, or what about getting some feedback about your gala event that happens last month? Or it can be, as the name is being used for actual petition that's used by political organization. So they need to, uh, to collect petitions. So we go in, once you have civic campaign installed, you're going to have the option of creating a new petition and you're going to give a name. We're going to save the pandas. <laughs> so, so this is the part when we talk about profile. So in the petition, you're going to have two profile. One is going to be used to collect information about the contact, the actual person is going to fill out the petition. And so we can see we can use an existing profile that's going to include first name, last name, and email address. And then we have another profile named activity profile. And that's where we're going to have the actual questions 
of your online survey. And for each question, you will have to create a custom field and add the custom field in the activity profile. So this is going to be this result. So that's here we can see the just the contact profile that's going to be used for your petition. So that's a question I have a lot. So you cannot, it's not going to be obviously anonymous online survey because you have to fill out at least the email address. Everything in CVCIM is related to email address. That's the minimum piece of data that you need for each contact. So it cannot be used for anonymous, uh, but that's not the objective of this petition. And so this is going to be the field that you can add in your contact profile. And this is an, it's an example of the activity profile that's going to use to collect the uh, answers to your questions about what did you think about your gala last, year, last month or last, last year, and to get feedback from your constituents. So the petition is a nice way to, for a chance to have the constituent talk to you and communicate and so they can let you know what they think about your organization, your programs, your service, and, and your events, and so on and so far. So the petition is going to be saved as an activity in the contact record. That's why it's named activity profile. And so you will be able to view the response to the petition by clicking on the activity itself. And also, don't, if you want to do a report to have all the answers to the petition that you have sent out to your members or to your gala participant, don't search for petition report. You don't have petition report, you have activity report. So select activity report and then filter on activity type petition. So that was for petition, so online. So petition is to collect data online. So usually you're going to send out to your constituents or members a link that's going to have, uh, will be able to have them to sign the petition. Now survey. So survey is used to collect data as well and we use also profile, but it's offline data collecting. So it's used for organizations that do phone canvassing or interviews or door-to-door -door, uh, canvassing to collect information about uh, voting uh, behavior. So that's the kind. We have, for example, an organization here in, in Denver. They do education about uh, uh, voting for Hisp the Hispanic community. So the idea is that you're going also to use profile. So two profile again. One will be used to collect information about the contact, and the other profile will be used to collect the actual answers to the questions. The difference with the petition is that you're not going to send this uh, through an email or post it on your website. The answers to the questions are going to be collected offline over the phone or face-to-face -face during an interview or, or at the door. So this is uh, the very specific way with survey that the profiles, when you build your profile with survey, you have this nice drag and drop options. So you can, um, as you can see on the right side of the screen, you have the list of all the available fields that are available to you to include into your profile. So for example, all your questions of your survey will have been going to be created as custom field that's going to be activity survey questions. And then you will be able to drag them, draw, drop and drag from the right to the left to include them in your actual profile. And then also you can move them around from, from the top to the bottom. This is, as far as I know, available only for survey. 
And I think that the plan was to develop also this very nice feature with other kind of profiles. Then this is when you are in civic campaign and then you have collected all the answers to your questions offline, then you will go in to enter them. And that's the way you do, you're going to uh, select the, uh, all the people who have response and then you're going to click on the right side and enter their response to your questions. Okay, so um, your search results that you see when you do your advanced search is actually a profile that you've had configured on your site. It's just already chosen for you, and you actually have other options. Like, let's say you always want to see people with their current employer, or you want the ability to at least be able to do that. You actually can do that. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that you're choosing the right profile type. So just for ease, I named this profile Search Views Individual. And then in my used for setting, and I think previously all we've really um, you know, chosen in, in the, previously in this uh, presentation is the standalone former directory. Well, the next option is Search View. As soon as you check that box, it then becomes an option in a dropdown on your, um, your, on your advanced search menu. So you pick that, you add your fields as you normally would the profile, you're, but you're a little bit more limited because you can't see like membership information and contribution information because the intention of this is really to be seeing different information about contacts in your search results. But it still is a nice feature if you're an organization that wants to see this, the different information in your search. So the way you do that is that you have this little drop down. I didn't see this. For like the first year I used Civi, I did not even notice this box. Um, so you know, now that you've seen this, maybe you'll, you'll notice the box for the first time. So these are all the different profiles that I have configured as um, search views. So they're all different and would show different information, but they're still the default view. And that's the one that has display name, street address, phone number, um, email address, that we're also used to seeing. So, and here is that standard, standard search view that you're used to seeing. So let's say you change your, um, your search view to the other one, and you can do it search by search. It doesn't have to be for the entire site. It could just be for right now. I wanna be able to see this information in a different way. So let's say we've just changed it for now. We wanna see the new, new we wanna see the current employer when, we, when we're searching for these individuals. Seal, you see that there. But it also strips some information down. It's so like a lot of my clients that, that use this, it's that they don't need to see everything at once. You know, They just want to see someone's name and their city and state. They don't need to see this really long thing that maybe they have to scroll back and forth. You can um, sort of make it a little bit more refined and it doesn't need to you know, show so much. So. It's a little blurry, but you can see the difference between them in this slide. So you'll see that like we stripped some stuff away, added current employer. Um, and that's really all it is. It's just, it's just a profile. So let's say I always, you always want that profile to be the profile that you see your search results as. To do that, um, you just go to customize data and screens. And you know, you're used to going there to add your custom fields, to add your profile, but you can also do it to modify your search preferences. And so if you want to change that, that default profile that you, that you, for your search results, click on that search preferences and just scroll down and you'll see there's a default contact search profile and you can change it there. It's a really like, easy thing that you can do that might make a huge difference for someone that you work with. Um, that they can see exactly what they want to see every time they run for run a search. Yeah. Um, if you do the default, it's site wide, but you can still always switch back and forth if you want to see the full information. So it just changes the default; it doesn't like get rid of anything. Again, profile. <laughs> Another way to to use profile is to help with data entry. So we're going to give you some several examples. One of them is going to be used when you need to enter a, a large or update 
a large number of records. So an example will be when you find out, so for example, you are an organization and contact belongs to different chapters, and then you might need to uh, set up which chapter they belong to. So maybe that's something that you missed when you did your data import, or is that something that you want to add after a while. So that's what we called batch update via profile. So batch update is the way to update a large number of records. So there is um, a maximum of 100 records that you can do at one time. So the way you access this batch update via profile action is you do a search on your contacts that you want to uh, do an update. And then in the action drop down menu, you select batch update via profile. Then you go in to select which profile you want to use to do this batch update. So an example is chapter update. So the example, so we did what we created this chapter update profile. We entered three fields, one first name, the other one last name, and the third one is this custom field name chapter and then you will you are able to select a different the Denver chapter that you want to have for all your list of contacts. So just one thing, when you do batch update via profile, you cannot do it on different contact type. So you have to do it for contact type such individual or organization or household. But you cannot do in the same batch update B on both. So if you have some batch update to do on both, you have to do it in a in different batch and create different profile. So the idea is to say, okay, I want all my list of contacts that I have selected to be part of the Denver chapter. So if I have 100 and don't, not necessarily to go one by one, so there is a trick. So you can, I don't know if you can see clearly on, but you have this blue icon on the left of chapter. You can click on it and automatically it's going to copy the option that you have selected in the first row for all the list. That's going to be the result. So all my contacts up to 100 will be updated with this data, Denver chapter. Okay, so the other this one thing that I recommend to my clients all the time is that if they have volunteers and maybe staff who aren't used to using Civicerum all the time doing any data entry, you can make a profile so that they're supposed to enter everything the same way all the time, and you also don't have to do anything funny with permissions. So it's just you make the profile available to them, you tell them how to find it, and then make it really easy for them to find it, and then they fill it in, and it's a really easy way to just add your contacts. So... Um, I'll talk about the, the way that I do that. So I just make a new standalone former directory and I'm very explicit about, you know, what should, what it's used for. Um, and then here's the form. So this is, if they're entering information about a new contact, this is everything I want them to enter. And, um, you know, if they don't have the information, they don't have to, but, you know, it, this, I find just the regular like adding of a contact can actually take a long time if you just do it from like new contact and new individual from Civicerum. So this is much faster. And you can also use that redirect URL um, option that, that Virginie talked about earlier and have it go directly back to this page so they can just continue to add a new contact. And you can have one for organizations and households too. But for this purpose, we're just looking at this individual one. And then, I'm using Drupal for this example, but if, they're, if my client's on Drupal, I make it really easy for them to find the, um, what they should be entering. So they'll have their own login in Drupal. I make a menu item, tell them, you know, it's like on the home page or it's a tab that's in their menu that only they can see because they have a certain, that like data entry permission. And then when they log in, there it is. It's right there. They know it says volunteer, but it should say volunteer interest. Or yeah, new, yeah, actually, if they click new contacts, that will take them to their 
to their new profile so they can add someone. And then as they're adding people, the page refreshes, they get taken back to the form, they add a new person. It saves a lot of time. It helps with data consistency. Because um, I know that you know volunteers, while they are helpful, they also have ideas of their own about um, how you should do something. So it's a way to sort of manage it without micromanaging it. And then um, there's all these in, there's all these internal profiles that Civi uses that you know one day it just sort of clicked with me like oh this is a profile and so is this and so is this and I felt pretty silly for not noticing it before but it actually runs a lot of a lot of how Civi works so you know these are the profiles that you're used to seeing you go to add a new profile you get the list of what you already have and it's you know some that are given to you when you install Civi Serum the first time, the name and address. We all you know, have seen that one before. And then anything else that you've added. But what you also see is this reserve profile. Reserve profiles are the, the things that Civi has there for you. You may not have ever looked at it before, but it does things like runs this new individual. So if you just go to add someone quickly, new individual, um, or new, like let's say you're signing someone up for an event, for the first time and they're not in your database and you're doing their registration offline and this little pop-up comes up with first name, last name, and email address, that's a profile. And then there's this other one, summary overlay. So this is a really special profile because it appears in a totally different way than it looks right here. So this is like a snapshot of a contact. Gives you their, their um, like some of their address information their tags, their groups, um, gender, date of birth. This is what it actually looks like in your site. So if you're looking at your search results and you just go hover over that little you know, person icon or organization icon, that's the summary overlay. That's what you're getting. That's actually a reserved profile in Civi CRM. And I think we got through everything, so yeah, we're good. Yeah, thank you. I think we're done.